Hi everybody, and welcome to Seriously, the show where I discuss the absurd nature of politics these days. Today we're going to be taking a look at a video called Are White People Doing Enough to Stop White Terrorism? It is by British comedian Josie Long, an upper middle class Jeremy Corbyn supporter. So in other words, every popular comedian in the United Kingdom these days. And no, I'm not trying to poison the well against her by smearing her character in order to undermine her argument. Don't worry, she does that without me trying and she's the one who'll be using the logical fallacies here. I'm just giving you an idea of who she is, as it might help us to understand that perhaps more elitist attitudes to serious issues like terrorism. Meanwhile, we have that, let's just say, interesting title. We've not even started and already the video is resorted to the logical fallacy of sweeping generalizations, as it is indicating that white people collectively aren't doing enough to stop terrorism. This strikes me as odd, given that a third of terrorists arrested in the UK are white. It seems that we as white people are at least reporting on them. Otherwise, such as will be far more successful and frequent, especially given that they take up a good chunk of these arrests. Not to mention how in the US, white terrorists are seen as the biggest threat in that regard. Why don't you think that white people are doing enough to stop terrorism if they are enough to identify, able enough to identify them as frequent culprits of it, frequent suspects? Meanwhile, the likes of Andrews Breverick, Dylan Roof, Thomas Mayer, among others, are str were strongly condemned and punished by both white people and society at large. So I do think we are doing quite a bit to combat white terrorism, whether that be in identifying or arresting them or condemning them at large. But hey, what do I know? Let's see how Miss Long here demonstrates her intellectual superiority over me in this regard. So, what do you have for us, Miss Long? Nobody's talking about essentially the radicalization of young white men. Maybe that's because it isn't happening. In the statistics I previously mentioned, general white arrests aren't even in the hundreds in the UK, making up 91, 91 of them. Given how that's not even 1% of the over 50 million white people living in Britain, there's clearly no huge problem with radicalisation of young white men, something further backed up with the infrequency of right, white terrorist attacks in Britain. Also, you don't provide any evidence in the video to back up your statement, nor provide any citations to any of this in the description. In other words, you just pull this claim out of your ass. I'm far more frightened of the far right than I am of Islamic terrorism. Really? Well, given that, is that Islamic terrorists combined have killed over 1,500 people in 2017 alone, commit most of the suicide bombings and commit terror attacks the most frequently, all I can say is... That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It would be as dumb as someone saying during the late 1930s and early 1940s that, yeah, I know these Nazi guys are bad in annexing countries, declaring war against other nations and executing Jews, but the Soviets are the clear villains here. They're the ones we should be fighting against. How utterly stupid do you have to be to compare the threat of sporadic far-right terror attacks to the frequent of our deadly Islamic attacks? I guess when one lives in a hippie, lefty hippie, we are the world, we are the children bubble, they will happily deny reality when it contradicts their narrative, even if denying reality is ignoring how these attacks are happening daily, making up most of the terrorists in their native country, and cause far more casualties and deaths. I wish I could be that wonderfully naive, but I prefer to live in the real world and acknowledge the bigger threat at hand here. Because the far right is far more mainstream. Hang on a minute. When you say far right, do you mean the actual far right, like say the National Front, the British National Party, Combat 18 and groups of their ilk? All the far right as the left perceives it as in people they disagree with. The far right is with Sun fucking newspaper and, and the consequences of that. So the latter. Good to know. Also, the last time I checked, the Sun wasn't a far right paper, but just a general right wing paper. And no, I'm not a big fan of the Sun, as I think it is an utter garbage shit rag of a newspaper that panders to the lowest common denominator possible. But it's clearly not far right. It clearly isn't when you pro don't provide any evidence as to why it is either, further undermining your argument. It will be as ridiculous as me saying that left-wing rags like the Guardian are far left because I disagree with them. It is utterly baseless. But do go on. Far right is Katie Hopkins up until very recently having a mainstream show that everyone could listen to the whole time. Any proof of this? No? Thought so. But hey, who needs arguments where you can rely on ad hominem slurs the same way that young children call each other mean names in the playground? Much of the mainstream left debate strategy relies on these childish insults due to a lack of any substantial argument, and it's no different here. Far right is Nigel Farage putting these posters up that are actually using the same imagery that Hitler's propaganda used. <sighs> so because one pro-vote leave poster that Nigel Farage unveiled looks like an image from Nazi propaganda, that makes it far right? Yeah, that's not an argument. It is a clear case of guilt by association, however. 
After all, your basis of comparing Nigel Farage to the Nazis is that a post you unveiled unintentionally bears some resemblance to a Nazi propaganda film. I mean, you didn't argue against the poster's message, nor did you specify anything beyond that as, as to why he is supposedly far-right. I mean, it's not like you're ignoring how his part of UKIP blocked such people from joining, or subsequently kicking out those who slipped through the cracks and rejected, gr and rejected deals with groups like that. And you also ignore Farage's various warnings against the rise of the far-right, as well as his condemnations in of the neo-Nazi Greek party Golden Dawn and the murder of Joe Cox by a far-right lunatic. The neo-Nazi party is on the march. That, that picture showed you what happened when Mrs Merkel made the huge error she made last year. You would not even, you yourself would barely have known of the existence of this had it not been for that horrible murder. So in other words, your accusation was utterly baseless. And it is as dumb as saying that Bashar al-Assad was for the longest time not a dictator because he allowed elections, despite him banning nearly all political opposition in said elections, being a leader on a hereditary basis, and having 4,000 political opponents being imprisoned. So, guilt by association and cherry-picking are your choice of for logical fallacy today. What more could you ask for? Oh, I don't know, an actual argument based on facts and evidence? And if you are comparing propaganda in the EU referendum to Nazi propaganda, I would say that the Remain side was far closer to adapting Nazi propaganda techniques than the Leave side were. After all, they smeared and demonised the political opposition as racist and intolerant, just like how the Nazis smear opposing parties, like how they said that the Social Democrats would initiate a communist takeover in Germany, for example. For instance, they also exploited tragedies and losses for atrocity propaganda, whether it be Germany losing World War I being blamed on the Jews, and the murder of Hertz Vessel on the entirety of the Communist Party, and even the Titanic sinking on the British, just like how the Remain side used the murder of Joe Cox to smear the Leave side as extremists. But the strongest link is the collective message in both the Remain side's campaign and Nazi propaganda. After all, both suggested that we were better, that we are better united as one, and their propaganda reflected this with the whole stronger in and in together slogans of the Remain campaign not being far off in terms of tone to Nazi collectivist slogans like Un Volk, Un Reich, Un Führer, and yes, Führer, we will follow you. Now, I'm not saying the Remain campaign will like the Nazis beyond these minimal links, especially since all propaganda follows the same pattern and repeats the same techniques, due to their effect. I'm just saying that it seems rather dumb to accuse your political opposition of doing something when you ignore how your side does the exact same thing because you agree with them. If you can't be somewhat impartial, then why bother? Everyone's like, the thing is, if you ignore Katie Hopkins, she'll go away. Mm, if you ignore the sun, it'll go away. I ignore them, they've not gone away. They've got worse. Nice way to mock the general population. You know, the side you claim to support and champion. As freaking ignorant for, to, for telling you to ignore things you, as you don't like. I mean, I know that elitists like yourself secretly hate the common man, but don't make it this obvious. Besides, you may ignore them, but many others hasn't, haven't, hence why they're so popular. After all, Katie Hopkins has nearly 85... 825,000 followers on Twitter alone, and, has a prom and had a prominent show on LBC, one of the most popular radio stations in the country. Meanwhile, The Sun is still, sadly, the most popular newspaper in the country, still ranking over a million readers. Then again, with its readership in decline, maybe more people are ignoring it, like you want them to. So what's your problem here? Oh, that you don't like their opinions. Big deal. I'm not fond, fond of the endless socialist garbage that spews out of the mouths of Owen Jones, Russell Brand, and James O'Brien, but I choose to ignore it because I can. I have no issue with people choosing to listen to them, so why should you be when it comes to right-wingers? And doing this one mocking patronizes the people whose side you claim to be on. That's nice. If you have somebody on their Twitter calling for a final solution, it's incitement to violence. It's not acceptable, and it's not a joke. And I agree here, at least. Her comments were extremely misjudged given the context of the situation when, at the time of her tweeting that, the motive and background of the Manchester Arena bomb was still unclear. Hence why she deleted the tweet and reworded it later on, claiming that the original was a typo, which, given that the original tweet spelt Manchester wrong, also backs up her argument. Meanwhile, she also stated that she wasn't referred to a Nazi-esque final solution, but rather a resolution to the issue, and I agree. It is not like she is wrong in calling for U the UK government to act against such terror, given that in the first few months of 2017, multiple terrorist attack acts were carried out by Muslim extremists which killed many, including children. However, we have yet to clamp down on such terror in terms of border protection, of which is terrorist abuse to come here, or finding the source of Islamic extremism, or which can consist of radicalization in prison and mosques, for example, instance. This seems rather strange, given both the immediate change in laws concerning other attacks, like, say, gun ownership after the dumb blame and hunger for massacres, as well as how one of the main points of government is to protect citizens from such attacks. 
from here, I can't really fault the rationale of Hopkins' tweet, even if the way she conveyed it was an extremely poor taste. And also, I'm not sure how one misjudged tweet is compared to Jews in Nazi concentration camps. Way to undermine the actual horrors of the Holocaust, you jackass. If you let Katie Hopkins get away with it, if you let Nigel fucking Farage get away with it, if you let these people get away with spewing their bile, what they do is they make other people's lives harder. And Yes, how dare we allow Katie Hopkins and Nigel Farage to have their opinions. Those wrong thinkers should be locked away. Hell, let's make poli general political dissent illegal. Just like it was in Vladimir Lenin's Russia, Muammar Gaddafi's Libya, Fidel Castro's Cuba, and of course, Adolf Hitler's Germany. Hell, you love bringing up the Nazis so much, I thought I'd do it too. Your call to censor your political opponents is far more Nazi-like than any of your comparisons to them. And they make people's lives harder? How? Does it bother that many people that their opinions are different, f that, that, that their opinions, that makes their lives physically harder? If so, they are big babies, but perhaps they should just ignore them if they are that much of a nuisance in their lives. And if you're referring to how they allegedly inspire terrorist attacks, that is a claim that has no basis in reality, considering that any of the far-right attacks have not been inspired by either Hopkins or Farage. I mean, Islamic terrorists always fight in the name of the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad, but people are denounced as racist or extreme for bringing that up. Meanwhile, you make basis claims about far-right attacks being inspired by K. Hawkins and Nigel Farage, and no one calls you out on it? What a joke. Besides, beyond disagreeing with you, what legitimate crimes have they committed? I'm waiting for any evidence here, of which you sorely lack. You're complicit in it. When I first heard about the Finsbury Park mosque attack, I was really angry and upset. I think it's the very worst of humanity to attack people who are trying to worship, people who've done nothing to anyone being harmed for the sake of hatred. No argument here, at least. The Finsbury Park mosque attack was undeniably tragic and targeted innocent people based on their faith alone. No disagreements here. When Jo Cox, the MP, was murdered, she was murdered by somebody who, as they committed that crime, shouted, Britain first, Britain first. Then when he's at his trial, he shouts, death to traitors, freedom for Britain. Again, no dissent here. Thomas Mayer was a far-right nutcase who deserves to rot in jail for his crimes. Whether he shouted Britain first while killing Cox is debatable, given the conflicted testimonies on the matter, but that's beside the point. This is all around Brexit. This is all around the rhetoric that Nigel Farage whips up. More guilt by association. Mayer was not a Brexiteer, and in fact his far-right attitudes had been in place long before Brexit, and to my knowledge there's no evidence that Brexit was what inspired Mayer to kill Cox. Besides, are you going to smear all Brexit supporters as far right because of one neo-Nazi lunatic going postal who wasn't even connected to Brexit? By that logic, Graham Dunn, a pro-Remain supporter who killed his Brexit-supporting neighbour over the issue, is representative of all people who voted Remain. But I'm not that close-minded, nor am I wanting to smear all my political opponents based on the actions of one idiot, unlike yourself. You've got the son that lies and creates a false front page headline saying that 20% of Muslims have sympathy for jihadis, which wasn't true at all. That no, it wasn't. It was actually 25%. And that's not even going into all the various other statistics around this. And no, I'm not saying that all Muslims are bad. Far from it, as most of them are ordinary and decent people who are condemning such acts, which is why such groups are the minority. But unfortunately, it is a sizable minority in, in said group, hence the concern over them. You could try to wish-wash these such statistics away, but they're there, no amount of, of dumb left-wing spin can change that. They had to publish an apology, which they published like that big, oh thanks, that helps, right? People reacting to this event where somebody has fucking murdered people, and then Tommy Robinson being like, well, we've got guys around country around. They have the fucking gall to pretend they have some kind of moral high ground when there's a terrorist attack. When they show up like vultures straight away, Tommy Robinson running to Westminster so he can shout his fucking mouth off. Well, given that Tommy Robinson was a reporter for the Rebel Media at the time this video was released, showing up at such events and covering them is kind of his job. By that logic, every single journalist who covered this event was a vulture. So, would you rather them not cover it and keep it hidden? Well, surely that means that we wouldn't know that such important events are happening in the first place, you fool. When something like this happens, then you find out what their real agenda is, because their real agenda is just perpetuating violence. How? You have demonstrated no proof of this whatsoever throughout this entire video. And I don't see how one could conflate spouting far-right views and criticising Islam to perpetuate violence. And if you're so concerned about that, I'm sure you're just as concerned by various celebrities advocating violence against President Trump, 
which has inspired actual not cases trying to attack Trump as well as kill Republican politicians, and the whole punch a Nazi movement in America which gave incentive for people to punch anyone they perceived as Nazis, whether the charges be accurate or not. No. And stop taking the moral high ground about these things if you can't be asked to be objective or honest about it. And there's a double standard when it comes to how the media treats people. It's almost been as if people are trying to shame the victims of this crime. You know, they're saying, oh, well, this mosque was associated with Abu Hamza, even though there are two mosques next to each other and Abu Hamza was associated with the other mosque, not this mosque. Not to mention the fact that that was 14, 15 years ago, there's an entirely new administration at the mosque. It's disgusting. It's completely unacceptable. And so ignore the fact that Finsbury Park Mosque has a history of radicalizing Muslims. Let's ignore how they had various links to Islamic extremists like Anjum Chowdhury and Richard Reid. Let's ignore how they had to be raided in 2003 by police over extremist concerns. Admittedly, the mock's reputation is now stellar and they have good relations with local council and police, but it isn't wrong for newspapers to criticise their previous practices. It wasn't wrong for the press to bring up Irish politician Martin McGuinness's links to the IRA when writing obituaries to him following his passing away in 2017. It also wasn't wrong for the press to bring up former Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon's killings of refugees in Lebanon when he passed away. As such, it isn't wrong to discuss a person's or place's history if it is discussed, even when that history is troublesome. It was perhaps poor timing, but it wasn't wrong. Again, denying reality won't get you anywhere. And it's not shown the other way around. A white person commits a crime like this, they're a troubled loner, and there's an effort to understand them with sympathy and to talk about them in terms of mental health. Even though most news coverage of this didn't do that, and called him a terrorist, which is what he was. And again, your argument has no basis. I don't remember Breverick getting such coverage, nor Mayor. I mean, well, you don't seem to care when the likes of, say, Michael Stanford or Tommy DiMaggio are given such coverage, whether it be the mainstream media discussing Stanford's mental health issues or DiMaggio getting a CNN interview. Surely that is far more worrying, as it is far more widespread it gives the legitimacy despite the horrendous acts. Also, you conveniently forgetting that the Russell Square attacker, who was Islamic, also claimed to have mental health issues by the mainstream media. I love your good old fashioned cherry picking. Now, that's not me saying that that isn't a good idea. Whenever anyone commits a crime, we've got to try and be as humane as possible in response to it. So what exactly is your argument here? On the one hand, you were, you were complaining about how people were humanized by the media despite the behavior, but then saying it is a good thing? What are you talking about? It's just ironic that they demonize the people at this mosque. Uh, no, they weren't. Rather, they were demonizing former terrorists who have been to that mosque and have preached there, but close enough, I guess. They weren't criticizing the actual victims you are to moron. And what happened was this man screamed that he wanted to kill all of them, committed acts of violence, horrific fucking acts of violence to people. And what the Imam managed to do was keep people calm, restrain him, make sure that no harm came to that person. Of which the media reported and covered, hence why they weren't demonizing everybody at this mosque, you cretin. Can you get your facts straight for one minute? It's better than violence. It's giving humanity to people even when they're offering you nothing back. That level of compassion and humanity in an instance like that is kind of amazing. I agree. Shame you don't just seem to have the same compassion when exploiting various murder victims, terror victims, and Holocaust victims to push propaganda, but hey, that's just me. All of this is all about othering people. It's about taking people's humanity away from them. It's about pretending that you can't empathise with people when in actual fact those people are exactly like you. Says the woman who throughout the entirety of this video has demonised both white men and right wingers, which takes their humanity away from them. Apparently it's okay to dehumanise people when they disagree with you, am I right? Do they ever teach you irony at Oxford, dear? Or are you that lacking in self-awareness? You can definitely link these things to wider problems. One of those things is probably down to the fact that male violence is a problem in our society. Men are put under immense pressure. Men are alienated. It's very difficult to live up to certain ideals of what it means to be a man in this society because they're bullshit. Firstly, you offer no evidence to back your claims. And secondly, you are as concerned when are you as concerned when male violence is committed by Islamic extremists, or do you only care when it is the far right doing it? You seem to be very good at excusing the former, that's all I'm saying, despite the various honour killings, acid attacks, and among other crimes that they commit. But hey, I'm clearly the new Hitler for saying this. Do carry on. Are you talking about the far right and then me saying things like toxic masculinity? I mean, I'm just begging for people to abuse me online here. Well, when you lie about things that fit an agenda, demonise your political opposition, use endless logical fallacies, exploit tragedies, among other failings, why should you be surprised to receive backlash? 
By the way, criticism isn't the same as online abuse, but given that you've already conflated the far right to include moderate conservatives like Nigel Farage and Katie Hopkins, I'll assume they will conflate anything to suit your narrative. From this, you've clearly been to the Anita Sarkeesian school of expanding the definition of abuse. Harassment is, as someone had mentioned, it's not just what is legal and illegal, right? Harassment is uh, threats of violence, but it's also the day-to-day -day grind of you're a liar, you suck. But it's about vulnerable people being targeted by extremists and exploited and made to do terrible things because they've got no one they feel they belong to. Which you've been doing throughout the entire video to smear and demonise those who disagree with you, but do go on. And the problem with the sort of ideology that someone like Thomas Mayer or this man who's committed this crime at the mosque, the problem with those is they're not true about what people are. I think human nature is complicated, life is complicated, but I think deep down people want to love each other and look after each other. That doesn't sound too hippie. And no, it doesn't. Human nature is complicated. You may be right that everyone wants to love each other inside. How ironic then that you happily simplify such a tragic event to basically blame your position in the hopes of scoring some cheap political points, while demonising them as well. That isn't complicated, nor does it show compassion. It simplifies the situation to an insulting degree while showing utter contempt for those who you may disagree with. That isn't too hippie for me at all. Rather, it is far too insidious and two-faced for my liking. Hmm, maybe that is why your political side is constantly losing, given that this is the sort of hypocritical crap that you put out. And so these people can't succeed in the long term and we have to not allow them to. But how? You've offered few solutions here to any of the problems raised here beyond meaningless platitudes and sickly sentimentality. The only solutions that you advocate, which include silencing your political opposition, are far too sinister and Orwellian for my liking. Meanwhile, your whole uniting against guys like this like this f thing at the message is the message endlessly rehashed after every terrorist attack. Given the constant continuation of them over the last few years, it just clearly doesn't work. Also, any of the solutions that, that others offered were seen as too extreme for you, to the point where you compare where you compare them to Nazis. Way to go! So that's the end of the video. Overall, it was pretty fascinating. Fascinating how one could complain about certain groups being demonised, or demonising other groups she doesn't like. How one could call for solutions, but then compare those who do offer solutions to Nazis because they don't share her political views, how one could be appalled at the alleged lies the mainstream media tells but then lies herself, how one could claim that her opponents have bad arguments while using endless logical fallacies, and how one could claim to care about such tragedies while exploiting them for political propaganda and using them to smear those she, who she doesn't like. Unbelievable. It demonstrates why the mainstream left is constantly losing the argument given how instead of any facts or logic, they resort to buzzwords, fallacies, and lies in order to prop up their very weak arguments, while well, wanting change yet and yet offer no solutions themselves, it encapsulates why more and more people are turning to the right, and also why in the next generation of the most conservatives is World War II. And given how bad the less representatives like Josie Long make such fools of themselves, the sooner that happens, the better. Unless the mainstream left can, can start using facts logic and actual arguments to express themselves, they'll continue to lose for the foreseeable future, and Josie Long is just the tip of the iceberg here. Thank you for listening, and this has been Absurd, the show where I just, seriously, the show where I discuss the absurd nature of politics today. Take care. I will do.